Paul, live from Chumukidima. Let's have a look. Funds can come where there's no investment, and unless investments are already in a state, their CSRs being spent in that state as a natural consequence. investment as it is capable of absorbing and uh, as a result it does also run short of CSR but this one call by the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland which he met and also gave me uh, in sometime early this year, March sometime this year, as a result you've had quite a good number of CSR offering each one tied to some good projects which will benefit and mostly I saw an accent on health related projects. So procuring good high end equipments for hospital, procuring uh, medical equipments, uh, also making sure the hospitals get facilities like for instance one of the programs that I will be concluding today uh, my visit with is a dialysis center which one of the so CSR, as a result of that one call from Honorable Chief Minister early this year, has brought in quite a big number of uh, fund uh, givers. And as a result, there are quite a few projects which have come out. 34, I think, uh, if I remember the number of projects, Nakul. Well, how many CSR projects were there totally? 36 projects have been announced to a total amount of uh, 38 crores and of which I mean 38 crores over and above that some of them were yet to come because the projects have been completely presented to them they are ready with the money we had planned that we will come with a 50 crore announcement now it is each 38 crores I think and uh, the rest of it will be made up sooner if that is one side of the story, the investment uh, interest you saw in the conclave that quite a few of these uh, uh, investors had come, industries had come, who are keen to uh, work uh, on possible uh, ways of investing in Nagaland. From uh, the ministry side, we wanted to ensure that there are enough bank access to Nagaland. As a result, we had uh, a complete review of how many districts benefit from the presence of banks and uh, those districts which are really not as much uh, covered by banks, there should be banking facility provided. Just for your uh, information, I want to say Dimapur has the maximum presence of banks, uh, 94 branches in total, uh, which is both public sector, RRBs, and if any, private banks as well. Uh, comes for Bima for the 58, uh, in total public sector, rural bank, and others as well. And third place goes to Mokokchang, um, fourth is uh, Woka, and fifth is Mon. Now, in Mon, incidentally, yesterday we had uh, opened up a private sector bank, Access Bank's branch. Uh, in all, totally in Nagaland, 271 of banks, both the public sector and private sector. Just only public sector and regional rural banks. Of the 271, 200 bank branches are of public sector banks and regional rural banks. Now, through the Jandan Yojana, accounts have been opened for all the citizens. Uh, as a result, the total cumulated direct benefit transfer amount which has reached Nagaland, DBT transfer to people who get it to their account. As a result, the total cumulated direct benefit transfer amount which has reached Nagaland, DBT transfer.
during the presentation in the banking conclave, I had uh, spoken about different schemes, how many got covered, how many persons got covered, what's the total amount, and yesterday exclusively in that program how many were added on to that. I'm not going to go into that, but what uh, is important for people in Nagaland to know and through the media I'd like to present that here is uh, Nagaland certainly requires a lot of help in terms of resources. Yesterday, while uh, uh, the Chief Minister had invited me to meet his cabinet colleagues, he had given me a detailed presentation and the current account and the balance uh, that is there, deficit, uh, all that has been explained. But I just want to highlight some data through you for the people of Nagaland. Tax devolution to Nagaland. In the period of 2014 to 19, compared to just 3,844 crores, 3,844 crores during the period of 2009 to 14. So comparing similar periods, that is 2014 to 19 to 9 to 14, you can see that from 3,844, I've already mentioned that number, 3,844, it has gone up to 13,782. Now that is what is due, collected total tax collected and amounts to be devolved per a formula given by the finance commission. Grants and aid for the same period I'm talking about, 2014-19. Compared with 2009-14, between 14-19, it has reached 29,483 crores. 29,483 crores. Whereas it was, between 2009 and 14, it was 20,800. These are some of the points which I want to highlight. Now for this year, this 22 to 23, the year in which we are, the total grants, finance commission based grants, which is what I read to you earlier, grants and aid, grants from the center to Nagal for this year 22 to 23 will be 4,773 crores. That's the budgetary allocation I'm talking about. There's always this question about infrastructure, particularly when it comes to Nagaland. Other than the usual for states, for building a It's a very important aspect and it has helped states during the COVID years 2020-2021 and it was extended further to 22. Now 23 we have come up with a total of 1 lakh crore for all states from which again Nagaland can benefit and that will be an interest free 50 year billet so they can use it for any 
one major project that they want to do. And I highlight uh, the special program which was designed for the Northeast called the PM Divine, which is called P-N-D-E-V-I-N-E, -E, which is uh, Development of Infrastructure in the Northeast. P-E-V for Development, I Infrastructure, and E for the Northeast. So PM Divine. Uh, we made a total allocation of 1,500 crores for the entire Northeast. States put big proposals. They can be greenfield, they can be brownfield. And in that, without going further into the details, I would specifically state that the state of Nagaland may submit capital expenditure project proposals up to an amount of 1,600 crores to meet any developmental infrastructure. The only component of it, um, about 20% of the component, which will be tied to some reforms. 80% of this amount can be untied. You can take it as is. The 20% is tied only because we want to make sure together with this kind of monies which you are receiving, you are also building those reforms which otherwise you find it difficult. So one or two steps have been given which I'm sure the state government will consider in the interest of better governance and take it up from there. My, my opening statements, I just wanted to highlight these particular things. I also will finally, I mean, I'll conclude those last questions. Smart city mission. which 195.99 crores have been utilized as of 8 July 2022. So I just want to highlight that. Uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, the various release, but one thing I'd like to add, PM Kisan, which the PM releases on a regular basis, money is released for farmers. Uh, two law, uh, two lakh thirteen thousand six hundred three farmers, beneficiary farmers in the state of Nagaland. Similarly, Jan Arogya Yojana, which is the PM Jan Arogya Yojana in which up to 5 lakhs a family can benefit. In that also, 81 empaneled hospitals are there in Nagaland and 2.54 lakh e-health cards have been already issued. E-health cards are very, very important because the patient can go to the hospital and ask for treatment without showing any more papers or pay cash so that e-card does it all for you and that has been issued to 2.54 lakh beneficiaries and this is for uh, PM Jan Arogya Yojana. Ujwala Yojana, I think the data is already available with you, I will just highlight. But for the media's sake, we are giving you a complete compilation of every data even if you've written it down or if you're not, you will get a copy of this running to some several pages. It goes into greater detail of every uh, scheme, of every tax being devolved, every program that is getting covered. So I won't spend more time in, into the details, but you're welcome. I'm sure my people will distribute that as soon as the press conference is over. Thank you. Thank you very much,
This paper will be submitted. I think uh, we'll have all the details. So, thank you very much. It is getting late for your other program. Two more programs and get the flight. So, you will be taking any questions? you have something? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, ma'am, for a gracious present in the three days to Navaland. In the three days, you have. Days you have, you must have been lots of so in your personal opinion, is Nagaland a case of underfunding or mismanagement? And as a supplementary, as the Union Finance Minister, what suggestion would you give to the State Finance Minister? And my second question is that on the first day, you spoke about adult dingering labs and one district, one product. And the second day during the, during the bankers' conclave, you directed banks and the state government machineries to undertake outreach campaign for welfare schemes. So does it mean, is it a recognition that the welfare scheme are not reaching the beneficiaries or producing desired results by the government of the day over the years, including the, the present government in which the BTV is also an RT. Thank you. Uh, you packed several things into what you call two questions, but it turns out four questions. Okay. So first thing, uh, for a logistic challenge state, because of its terrain, the nature of the terrain, infrastructure is always a big issue. It's always built over several years, but for whatever reason, it's also catching up because of the evidence uh, being given uh, under the PM Gatisha. Now, as regards resources, I've read out how much of resources were available for Nagaland, say between 2009 and 14, and how much is now available. And as a result of now <coughs> increased available resources, you see lots more activity happening in the ground. So infrastructure is ramped up, a lot more facilities are reaching villages. The uh, internet connectivity is also happening in the villages. Now, as a result, there is a reason now to benefit from aggregation and that is why It's not actually the way I would look at it because I read out the details yesterday and the, uh, the booklet which has been given to you has all, all the details. Banks do not have to access credible, eligible uh, borrowers for every scheme. Now, if those who are eligible for it have to be identified, there is a special effort to be made. Bank staffing may not be adequate for them to go into deep villages and identify such people. Even otherwise, the good performance has been noticed. In, for instance, yesterday I said Mudra, PM Mudra scheme is doing very well. Stand Up India is doing very well. Each branch is giving uh, funds for SEs, STs and women. So, that is why yesterday I made it a point to explain it. That if there are 100 eligible people to get benefit from one scheme, we need to reach all the hundred is my answer. Unless the eligible person himself or herself says, I don't need it, I'm okay without it. We need to reach. 
And in order to reach, I'm asking the banks to go to the districts. They are not being asked to go to the districts because no work has happened. They are being asked to go to the district to complete those which are incomplete yet. And they shall complete it by 30th of November. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, our Finance Minister, and thank you, everyone. Thank you.